Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This video is on the buffer system in acid-base physiology. Everything in human acid-base physiology surrounds the hydrogen ion. If a substance can donate a hydrogen ion, it's called an acid, like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid or the one we use here is carbonic acid. If that substance accepts a hydrogen ion, it's called a base, like bicarbonate. Acids and bases could be strong or weak. A strong acid is like hydrochloric acid, and a strong base is like sodium hydroxide. A weak acid is carbonic acid, and a weak base is bicarbonate, and we use these two for acid-base regulation. The concentration of this hydrogen ion in blood is around 40 nano equivalents per liter. That's a lot of zeros, so it's a super small number when compared to a substance like sodium whose plasma concentration is 140 milliequivalents per liter. It's so small that handling a number like this can be difficult, and that's why we express it as a pH. The pH is the log of 1 over the hydrogen ion concentration. The important thing here is the relation between pH and the hydrogen ion. It's inverse, so if the hydrogen ion concentration increases, the pH reduces, and vice versa. And also, it's a logarithmic relationship. It's not linear. So this equation can be rewritten as the pH equals minus log of the hydrogen ion, and if we put the normal plasma hydrogen ion concentration into the equation, we get minus log of 40 nano equivalents, and that gives us 7.4. This is the normal pH of blood. But like all normal values, it's a range, 7.37 to 7.42. For convenience, we take it as 7.4. So if the pH is less than 7.4, that means the hydrogen ions are high and it's acidemia. If it's more than 7.4, the hydrogen ions are low and so it's alkalemia. That was the plasma. A side note here is that the pH inside the cell is a little lower, at 7.2. The body produces acids quite regularly from metabolism. There are two kinds, volatile and fixed acids. Carbonic acid is a volatile acid, but it isn't produced directly. Carbon dioxide is produced by cellular metabolism. It combines with water, and by carbonic anhydrase, it forms carbonic acid which then dissociates into the hydrogen ion and a bicarb ion. The hydrogen ion is the acidic component, which then gets transported to the lungs, where the reverse reaction happens and carbon dioxide gets breathed out. Fixed acids are formed by the catabolism of proteins and phospholipids, like sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. They are not volatile. They don't get breathed out like carbon dioxide, so they have to get buffered and excreted by the kidney. So there are three acid-base regulatory mechanisms, the chemical buffers, the lungs, and the kidneys. The buffers are like a band-aid. They work quickly in seconds to minutes versus the lungs, which take a few minutes to hours, and the slowest are the kidneys. Though they're slow, the kidneys are the strongest. A buffer is a mixture of a weak acid and a conjugate base, or a weak base and a conjugate acid. Together, they're called a buffer pair. A buffered solution resists a change in pH. If hydrogen ions are added, the buffer binds to it reversibly. So if the hydrogen ion concentration is high, the reaction shifts to the right. If it's low, the reaction shifts to the left and more hydrogen ions are freed. The pH of a solution is given by the henderson hasselbalch equation. pH equals pK plus log of base over acid. How do we get this equation? So from this reaction, K1 and K2 are dissociation constants. So at equilibrium, when the rate of forward and reverse reactions are equal, K1 into the acid is equal to K2 into the hydrogen ion concentration into the base. So K1 over K2 equals the hydrogen ion concentration into base over acid. Now this ratio can be called K 
which is the equilibrium constant. So K is the hydrogen ion concentration into base over acid. If we rearrange this equation, the hydrogen ion concentration will be the dissociation constant into the concentration of the acid over the base. Expressed as a pH, minus log hydrogen ion concentration is equal to minus log of the dissociation constant minus the log of the concentration of acid over base. So pH equals pK minus log of acid over base, and if we reverse this to make it positive, pH equals pK plus log of base over acid. And this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The pK is specific to each buffer pair. K is a dissociation constant. So for a strong acid, which is more dissociated, there's a higher K and so a lower pK. And for a weak acid, which is less dissociated, there's a lower K and a higher pK. There are three buffer systems in the body. The most important is the bicar buffer in the extracellular fluid. The others are the phosphate buffer, which is a urinary and an intracellular buffer, and protein buffers, like hemoglobin, which is the main intracellular buffer. For the bicar buffer system, the base is bicarbonate and the acid is carbonic acid or carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide combines with water and by carbonic anhydrase it forms carbonic acid, which then dissociates into a hydrogen ion and a bicarb ion. Now these reactions are reversible. If there's more hydrogen ions added, the reaction shifts towards the left. So more carbon dioxide is produced, which is eliminated by the lungs. The lowering of carbon dioxide reduces the hydrogen ions and therefore the pH normalizes. If a base is added, it binds to the hydrogen ion, so more carbonic acid dissociates, meaning more carbonic acid is being used. So that increases the consumption of carbon dioxide. The lowering of carbon dioxide inhibits the respiratory centers, which increases the carbon dioxide levels now, increasing the hydrogen ions and normalizing the pH. So depending upon whether hydrogen ions are needed or not, the reaction will shift either to the left or to the right. For the bicarb carbon dioxide buffer pair, the pK is 6.1. So the pH is equal to 6.1 plus log of bicarb over carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide we measure as a partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So the concentration is equal to partial pressure into the solubility coefficient. For carbon dioxide, the solubility coefficient is 0 0.03, which makes this equation the pH is equal to 6.1 plus log of bicarb over 0 0.03 into the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. And this is the formula that you need to remember. This bicarb carbon dioxide buffer pair is most effective within one unit change of pH. Next is the phosphate buffer. So these are minor buffers. They could be inorganic or organic. The inorganic buffers are also extracellular buffers, but they're more a urinary buffer. The kidney secretes hydrogen ions, but the urine has a limiting pH. So there's a limit on how much hydrogen ions can be excreted. If there's more hydrogen ions secreted, than bicarbonate in the tubular lumen from the glomerular filtrate, hydrogen ions get sneaked out with buffers like phosphate as titrable acids. Organic phosphates like ATP and ADP are more intracellular buffers. Among the protein buffers, the most important is hemoglobin, which is an intracellular buffer. And if you recall carbon dioxide transport in the lung, you can see it in action there. From cellular metabolism, carbon dioxide is formed, which combines with water to form carbonic acid, which dissociates into a hydrogen ion and a bicarb ion. The bicarb ion gets exchanged for a chloride ion. If the hydrogen ion stays like this, the environment becomes acidic. So it binds with hemoglobin and that buffers it. It then gets transported to the lung and dissociates where the reaction reverses and carbon dioxide gets breathed out. And those are the important buffers in acid-base regulation. 
If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.